it was going to be fit to bring both of you guys in. And what an end to that series. Definitely took a little while getting there, but wow, is all I can say. Uh, I suppose it seems, Becky, you've been, you've been training power pretty well. But let's get right into it. Uh, how, do you, how do you keep your mental fortitude in an 80-minute game, the longest, by the way, in EULCS history? Uh, well, for me, honestly, at some point, after the second or third try, I just thought the game was never going to end. So I was thinking, okay, the game is going to be like this for two hours until someone makes a mistake. So at some point, I got pretty relaxed because I knew we couldn't finish, but they couldn't finish. So I was like, okay, so let's just keep playing it, and at some point, we will get all the innings, and the creeps will be so strong, we might finish. Well, so <laughs> For, for me, it was actually a little bit the opposite because I was actually nervous because in, the, in this kind of particular game, if it's so long, one mistake will lose you the game or win you the game. And you could see, like, when I, when I died, they tried to finish the game. When we killed Victor on top lane, we tried to finish the game. And it's, like, uh, really intense. And But as Becca said, like, the, they could not really leave the base. And we didn't really let them leave the base. And it was, like, an endless game going on. And I agree that I was not thinking that this game will end so soon as well. Yeah, well, and of course, when it finally happens, it's definitely got to be abrupt. Uh, it was such a different game from the first series. You know, you guys, you got hit pretty hard in the jaw right there at 30 and a half. And why was this game so different, in your opinion? Well, so I think our biggest comeback was when um, they catched one of us. I can't remember who. They tried to go for the Baron, and we got the catch on the Victor. Um, I think out rotated them really heavily and sneaked the Baron. And there was like a huge power spike because of the Baron, we, we got two inner turrets and that was an insanely global gold lead we, we got. Yeah, and you certainly made it work for you. Um, you guys got a, an, an incredible number of objectives just continuing to roll it forward. I was actually going to ask you, but you got like 15 inhibs on the game. It was pretty insane, but after, after a roller coaster and a finish to, to take a 1-1, against Fnatic, one of the best teams here in Europe. Pekka, I just got to ask you, as you know, kind of the big rep for the team, is this where you guys start to turn your season around? Uh, well, ho hopefully, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's hard to tell because obviously we still play both games. The problem was the, the early was not, not optimal. It was, we were a bit, a bit behind and then we just made mistakes. The difference is that this game, even though we we're behind, like he said, they made a mistake and we were able to come back into the game. And once we were back, we kind of know how to play the game. Like, we, can, we know what we had to play for, how to do it. It's slower, faster. Once you're ahead, it's easier. But we had to, yeah, to still improve early. And I think that if we manage to get better early games, we could turn it around, yeah. <laughs> well, it's encouraging to see. Thanks again for taking the time, gentlemen. Congratulations on winning that last hell of a game and taking a tie on the series. Good luck to you tomorrow against Splice. Now, though, we are going to send it back to the analyst desk to break down what is one of the craziest games we've ever seen here in Europe. Thank you, and I couldn't be happier that I'm joining